Well, good morning. Welcome to Compassion Church. Will you stand to your feet? Let's worship together, family. Here we go. Hands up. I was buried beneath my sin. Who could carry that kind of way? Listen. It was my tomb till I made you. All right, we're going to do it together. Here we go. I was breathing for God. You sound good, come on. I want my failures, I try to hide. Sing it. It was my tune till I made you. Let's sing this again. You call my name. special time of communion. And so when you came in, you got a cup like this. If you didn't, if you will raise your hand, I know someone will come to you. I see a few right here. Um, they're right here in the back. Y'all keep your hands raised. They'll come give you your communion cup. This is a special time where we can remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. And in 1 Corinthians, it says, that is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. 
God has asked us to take a few moments before we take communion to just see if there's anything in our heart that shouldn't be there. And so right now, we're just going to take a moment of silence and prayer. It says in 1 John 1, 9, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. And so he's promised that when we say, God, I'm sorry, I messed up this week. God, would you forgive me that he's going to forgive you? So right now, if you'll just take a few moments, you can bow your heads. We're going to have a, a time of silence and prayer and just check and check in and see if there's anything between you and God that you want to pray to him about. Jesus, God, we come before you and we just want to say we're sorry. God, we're sorry for the sins that we've committed, God. In your word, it says that you know that we're dust. And God, you know that we're not perfect and we can't pretend to be. And God, we mess up. But God, we acknowledge today that we're sorry for our sins. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for making a way where we can come before you clean like we've never sinned. God, it says in your word that when we ask your forgiveness for our sins, that you forget them as far as the east is from the west. And so, God, we praise you and thank you for that. In your name we pray. Amen. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he left his disciples and all of us with two symbols. The first is the bread. And the bread symbolizes his broken body on the cross. You know, he had a crown of thorns on his head. He had a a, a spear through his side and he went through all that pain he was nailed to the cross to take on sin he, he took on our sin so we could have a way to be with him forever and right now we're going to read um, this together before we take the bread this next scripture it says for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So now let's take the bread together. And the second symbol he gave us is the cup, which represents his blood that was shed for us on the cross. He died for us, and he shed his blood. And today we want to drink that in remembrance of him. And it says, in that same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's drink the cup together. And now I just would like for us to join as a church family and just thank God for this. Thank, thank him for his sacrifice. If you feel comfortable, you can just hold your hands out like me and just surrender in gratitude. In gratitude. And we're just going to thank him for what he's done for us. Dear Jesus, Lord, we gather here today to just say thank you. God, we don't deserve the blood that you shed on the cross. Lord, you became sin. You became my sin so I could be free. And God, we gather today as a church family to just remember the sacrifice, to remember what it means in our lives. God, because of your sacrifice, we have freedom, we have life, we have a reason to live, we have purpose. And God, we remember what you went through that day. And God, we also know that you didn't just stay dead, God, that you rose again and you live today in heaven. God, we just celebrate that together as a church family. We just say thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Welcome all family as we sing this next song. Let's reflect together.
Church, you believe that Jesus is our living hope this morning. Let's sing this out together. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain it could not climb. And as 
inspiration that's in heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness and through the darkness your love and kindness so through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written and Jesus Christ my Who could imagine so great a mercy? But I could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages set down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Let's sing this out. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. And Jesus Christ, my living hope. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. The key of the morning, the seal, the promise, your buried body begins to breathe, and out of the silence, the Declare the grave has no claim on me. Come on, church. They came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to bring in doubt of the sun. It's the victory. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost his grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my up your worship to our living hope today. Oh, there's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. All we want to do is worship you, Lord. 
You're so good to us, Jesus. Fill us up with all you are. Our living hope. You're the only king forever. As you are, as you are. Thank you, Jesus. Say hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. And death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain. This salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. That's the truth, Lord. <laughs> Our living hope. When there was no way, God, you made a way. Sometimes it's hard for me to understand why you love us the way that you love us and how much you love us, God. We don't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. Knowing you, you know everything. You knew the sins that we'd commit past, present, and future, but still you said that we were enough. Thank you for what you did on the cross. And it didn't stop there, Lord, but you rose from the grave three days later. We can celebrate that today, Lord, because you're alive and you're well. You're walking with us. There's never been a moment that you've left us. Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray that above all things that we do here in our service at Compassion Church, that we would just give you glory because you deserve it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Come on, can we give a shout of praise for our good God, church? Amen. Before you sit down, I'm gonna give you three seconds. I want you to fist bump three people you don't know. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, you can be seated. Welcome to Compassion. I'm so glad that you're here. How many of you are already having a good Sunday today? Awesome. It's just so good to be with you. My name is Julie. I just want to take a few moments and welcome you to Compassion. Um, it is hot out there today, but we have coffee. I believe we have iced coffee, which is really good. And we have donuts. It's pretty cool today. So we just want to take a few moments and, and hope that you feel right at home. If it's your first time today, we just want to say welcome to the family. We are family here, but anybody's welcome. Right, church? Aren't you glad to have new people here today? Yeah, we're excited to have you here. If I can have everybody pick up this card, it's red and blue, and it says Back to School Splash. Last week we had a Back to, uh, back to School Splash Sunday. It was really special. We were able to pray over all the kids. And we use this card. If you did not fill out this card last week, we want everybody to fill out this card. If you're new, you can go ahead and start filling it out. And it says, this is my first time at Compassion. You can check that box. If you've attended before, you can check the I attend regularly box. But you're going to need this card in a little bit. Pastor Myron will go over the back with you. And so then you'll be able to drop it in the offering um, buckets on the way um, at the end of the service. And so we would love all of you to just go ahead and start filling that out. It's a great way for you to take a step with your family. If you're new, just fill this out and you can drop it in the um, buckets on the, on the way out. So, so many of you come with such a heart of generosity. You give and you worship God in your giving. And if you're new, you can just kind of close your ears and cover your eyes right now. We're not asking for anything from you, but we have people here who want to give. And you know, in, in God's word, it says, test me. And you say, I don't know if I can test you, God. I don't know if I can give. And he says in his word, test me with your finances. Test me and I will open up the doors of heaven and just throw blessings at you. So I encourage you, if you haven't tested God and you're giving to take that step and to worship God in that way. And here are three ways that you can give. If you want to know, how do I become a part of the church family? Well, how do I take my next step? We would inv and like to invite you to Compassion Culture. We met this morning. We meet at the 9 o'clock, and we meet at, um, for two weeks every single 
month you have a time that you can jump in. And so we encourage you. We had someone here this week that last week was their first week here at Compassion. And then they're already in Compassion culture. And it's a great way for you to see what our church is all about, hear about our vision, our mission. You, we get to hear about you. And then you can see if this is where God wants you to be. And so we encourage you to sign up. You can sign up online or sign up at the Connect Tent. We have breakfast. It's a great way to meet other people. So I encourage you to take that next step for September Compassion Culture. Okay, ladies, I need to hear where are you at because we have She Night coming up this Tuesday night. It's going to be great. Sorry, guys, if you want to know about She Night, I know one way you can come is you can serve. So that would be good. If you're single, it's a great way to come to meet some single ladies, right? So anyway, I don't know why I said that, but She Night is this Tuesday night. Um, I'll be speaking. We also have a panel of ladies that are going to be helping me out this this time. And so if you're if it's your first time, just go ahead and come. You're going to meet people. If you're coming along, get me out there on the patio and I will um, say, hey, I've got some other girls who are coming along. It's okay. You're going to meet people. Please, please come and invite your friends and family. Free child care, free event. We're also going to give back to Maggie's Place, which is a shelter that um, helps support women. And so there are items on our website that you can look. We're bringing all things baby, I believe. And so make sure you pick up something um, before you come if you feel like God wants you to. So how many of you are either in a small group, you've been in a small group, or you're going to be in a small group? Okay, let me hear you. That should be everybody, right, in here? Well, small groups uh, launch next week. And so after the service, we're going to be out on the patio. There's a group for each of you. And so we're going to be doing sermon-based content. That just means what Pastor Myron teaches up here in your small group that week. You're going to get to go even deeper in that. And so we encourage you to join a small group. We meet in homes. We meet here. We meet all over. And so make sure that you get connected. We also have classes. We have a men's Bible study, a women's Bible study. We have a Sunday night Bible. We've got everything that you can want and more. Maybe not. But we encourage you to just sign up so you can take your next step and grow together with family. Guys, we're so glad that you're here. I hope you enjoy the service. It's on marriage. And so I hope Pastor Myron does a good job. Okay, enjoy the service. Everybody, welcome to Home Improvement Round 2. If you're glad to be here, put your hands together and make some noise. Wow, it's fun to be here today. I see so many new faces and so many of you returning again and again. Great to see you today. Just before we jump into Home Improvement Round 2, I want to go over this card that uh, my wife Julie mentioned. And did you catch that little statement that she hopes that I do good because it's on marriage? Did anybody else get the little, little, little thing right there? Yeah, I thought so. And hey, babe, I hope I don't disappoint. And uh, you've taught me so much through 20 years of marriage that I think, uh, I think I got this, right? Yeah. I'm still learning. How many of you have been married longer than 20 years? Anybody out there? All right. 20 years, that's a lot. Let's give them a hand. It's great to be in church today, and uh, today, as we're just reminding you, just in case you didn't get a chance to fill out the 30-day growth challenge last week, because a lot of you are here, maybe you weren't here last week and didn't get an opportunity, we didn't want to leave you behind, because we are taking a growth step as individuals this year. Over the next 30 days, we're going to be implementing habits and just new life patterns that are going to develop in 30 days. If you do it 30 days, you're going to be closer to God, closer to others, and a better version of yourself. And here it is, the 30-day challenge. All right, show me that card if you've got it in your hand. You can go ahead and begin to fill it out on the front and then look over on the back with me. And uh, we are challenging each person to commit to take at least one Spiritual growth step over the next 30 days. Really important because we want to help you grow. We want to help you be better, closer to God. Please check all that apply. Number one, I'm committing to invite and bring at least one person to a Sunday service in the next 30 days during our Discover Your Destiny series. Now, the Discover Your Destiny series starts next week. It launches our march through the book of Matthew. 
that's going to be an in-depth study in the book of Matthew with practical applications for your life, your home, and your relationships. This study, Discover Your Destiny, will help you and others that you invite discover their God-given purpose for living on this earth. God's got a plan for your life, and right now, if you go out and invite people to the Discover Your Destiny, you're going to find your purpose, you're going to help them discover their destiny and see what God has in store for their lives. So what I'd love for you to do is check that box. And uh, one more point about our Discover Your Destiny series that starts next week. It's through Matthew, like I said, and I'm going to ask everybody that would, if you're willing, to get a copy, a hard copy of the Word of God called the Bible. And maybe uh, you normally use a digital device. We're going to try something. We're going to bring like uh, a regular Bible. We're going to go old school on this. Because in my own life, I've been sensing the need to eliminate, like we talked about, digital distractions, and I get so many notifications on my phone when I'm doing my devotions on my version app on the Bible, I'm getting tons of text messages. So what I'm doing is eliminating those distractions in my own life, brand new Bible, wide margin for me, and I'm going to be taking notes and unplugging from my cell phone so I can get along with God in a, in a more intimate way, and I want you to do that as well. You can get a copy of the Word of God out on the patio And you can buy one for $15. We've got um, an affordable model. And then we've got a $30 $30 one. So whatever one you want, check it out. Um, Then if you don't have the money, we'll give you a Bible, okay? So we want everybody to have a copy. And you can take this to your small group. That's so important. You can take it here to church and mark it up and highlight it. You can have it at home and dig into God's Word. So that's part of the 30-day challenge. Number two, I'm interested in making compassion my church home. I want to attend Compassion Culture on August 13th. My wife explained Compassion Culture. Come get to know us. Let us get to know you. We would love for everybody in here, if you've never been to Compassion Culture, to sign up right now. Check that box, and we'll give you the information. It starts on August 13th. It is dope. It's awesome. It's wonderful, and you need to be there for Compassion Culture starting on August 13th. Check that box. And then I'm committing to start giving consistently starting on August 20th. All right, so I'm challenging you to do what so many of us are already doing, to start giving in a consistent fashion through um, maybe an automatic draft or something like that so that you can worship God consistently every month in your tithes and in your offerings. Let me just say this. I'm not up here asking for your money because we're in a financial bond. Our giving is up. We're doing really good. You know, we can always do more, though, Uh, Let me just give you two good reasons to continue to give and to step up and start giving on a regular basis. Number one, over the summer months, we've had 150 people from Compassion engaging in outreach opportunities in our community over five activities and events. Can we praise God for 150 of you all stepping up and going out into the community? Turning the church inside out, going out of these walls into the streets and helping people find and follow Jesus, helping them with no expectation of return, just to be nice to them with food, with acts of service. And so that's what you're giving to. And I want us to dream together. Wow, wow, what what if we could do more even? And we can do more as we partner together through our giving. Uh, This year we've seen 33 people baptized at Compassion Church. Yes, (laughs) praise God. And so we want to be involved in our community and we want to see life change happen where people turn from their old life to brand new life in Christ and that's represented in baptism. So be sure to check that box that, hey, I'm going to give consistently starting August 20th. And then I'm committing to serve every week or every other week for the next 30 days. Take the 30-day serve challenge right there and you can find a community of people that love you and that get uh, do life together with and you get to meet people that way. And you get to serve God in a big way here at Compassion. And then the last one, I'm committing to pray daily for our church to help us find, to help others find and follow Jesus. And you're going to pray daily for the next 30 days. Check that box. You'll drop this in the offering buckets at the very end of the service. And now we are in round two of home improvement round two. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Look at your neighbor and say two words, home improvement. So it's going to take a minute. Home improvement. Let's try it again. Tap them on the shoulder. Say home improvement. That's what this message is all about. Last week was all about digital distractions. And this week it's all about dangerous distance. Dangerous distance. And I want to help improve your home. 
let me just throw some stuff out here to get us going. Number one, the number one gift that mom and dads can give to their children is a strong relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the number one thing. If you have a kid, if you're going to have a kid, the number one thing that you can provide for them is a strong relationship with Jesus Christ that's going to pull them, point them in the right direction. The number two most important gift that you can give as a mom or as a dad, if you're married, is a strong marriage relationship, a close marriage relationship. We're going to talk about how God wants married couples to be close. I'm going to talk about sex today. So if you're scared, uh, just hold on tight because it's going to be awesome. I'm not going to go too crazy because my kids are in here. I got two kids in here. I say kids, they're young men, right? And uh, you know what? You don't have to worry about anything because they're looking at worse stuff on Instagram, right? Not my kids, your kids, right? <laughs> My kids better not be. But you know what? I'd like for them to hear the truth about sex instead of all the lies and garbage out there, all right? So you can clap for that if you want and say amen. Let's go. <laughs> sex. We're going to talk about sex today. All right. So here's the deal. Um, if you're single and ready to mingle, you're at the right place. I just want to tell you. Yeah, we can hook you up today. Here's the deal. The, the relational principles that we discuss. Gus today, oh, these guys, man, I got some guys on their front row, they're ready. They're single and searching, right? Now, it doesn't matter if you're married or not, you don't have to even try hard to get a whole lot out of this message because the relationship principles that we look at today and explore together are going to help you in any relationship that you want to improve. So it's going to be, this is going to be a fun, man. You're a fun crowd. You're better than the 9 o'clock. I'm just going to tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love you guys. How many of you had coffee and tons of it today? Come on, let me see you. Yeah, that's my crowd right there. All right, so uh, today you say, man, my marriage is not the best, and it sounds like it's going to take a lot of work. My relationship is rough, and I don't know if I'm willing to put the work in. And let me just tell you, um, a couple things can happen today. Number one, your sucky relationship can get better. God can heal it today. All right, I'm just tell you, in these moments, over the next few moments, as we look at biblical principles and gospel-centered stuff around Jesus Christ, you're going to be able to have a perspective shift, a paradigm shift about your marriage. So I hope you'll tune in. I hope you'll lean into the teaching today and be open to it. Because I know some of you are saying, I'm not willing to put the work in. But I hope you'll lean in today and keep an open mind. Because your sucky marriage can become an awesome marriage. And if you have an okay marriage, it can become a great marriage. Or, here's the alternative. You can leave, go right out those doors, go into the parking lot, get in your vehicle, and go right back to your crummy marriage. You can do that if you want. Or you can lean in and learn how Jesus can help revolutionize your relationships. So today, uh, it's going to be good. No crummy marriage. God doesn't want your relationship to be crummy. He wants it to be close. God, listen to this, God designed relationships. God's original intent is romance, laughter, and love. He created all that in the Garden of Eden. And I've got a beautiful little planter box up here that I put my tool belt on and I built. No, I didn't. you know better, right? Pastor Myron can't build anything. But I did lay the flowers in here. And uh, I, need, uh, I need a couple uh, newlyweds. If I can get some uh, volunteer help from the Isaiah and Maddie. <laughs> we we pre-planned this. All right, let's give them a hand. They're going to come up. And uh, God made a garden called the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. We know that. And uh, in the book of Genesis, he put this dude named Adam and Eve together in the Garden of Eden. The garden today represents God's original desire for your relationships to be close and beautiful. Now, we're in home improvement. Just a couple things about your home. It can be beautified and made more valuable through a garden, through flowers, through nice landscaping. It's very important. Realtors will tell you, make sure your flower garden, your, your landscaping is great. It adds value to your home. And today I want to add value to your home by showing you God's original intent is for you to be close, like these two lovebirds, right? Let's get them really close. Look at this. Woo, woo. Give them a hand. They're in love. How long y'all been married? Uh, Isaiah, good job. Okay. Seven months. Seven months. Give it up for them one more time. I just like clapping. All right, so this is the way God intended, okay. All right, and, and yeah, like, like just like we're saying the vows and all that stuff, they're in love. <laughs> yeah, he does. And he's happy. And then, have you all ever gotten in a fight? Nope, never. never, okay. Good answer. They, the, 
we're doing good here. But let's just say, truth be told, that you got in an argument, and instead of being like this, uh, you took a t- you take like five steps back, all right? And you get up here to the garden because we got to show off our little flower garden here. And then uh, maybe Maddie, would you um, hold up your finger toward him like you're in an argument? And then, and then Isaiah do this because it's never the guy's fault, right? We just say dumb stuff all the time and we get in trouble for it. How many of you guys can relate, okay? And instead of being close like God intended, we end up being separated. Let me tell you, that is a dangerous place to be. Because you get away from each other, a little distance sets in, one offense at a time, you start building a fence between you and your spouse, and you go to the gym, and someone at the gym is extra nice. You know that, you know that perv dude at the gym who's always like stalking people and stuff or whatever. And you know, there's always that you know, weirdo or somebody just starts being friendly. Maybe it's on the job, it's at the office. And and there's this distance. And, and it, it wasn't there to begin with, and all of a sudden now the danger is this. It goes from the problem at the gym to now it's, the, it's somebody at work that's being extra flirtatious. And there's a lingering look, there's a touch, and danger sets in. And so today we're going to talk about the danger of this right here. The dis- They're going to come back up in a minute, but let's give them a hand as they go back to their seats for a second. We're going to have fun today. It's going to be good stuff. Glad you're in church. You picked a great day to be here Number one, God wants you to be close, right? That's our point. He doesn't want your marriage to be crummy. He wants it to be close. And I'm going to give you three areas that he wants it to be close. Number one, he wants you to be close socially. That means he wants you to be best friends. God wants a husband and a wife to be um, close in a way that is like we can't even explain. That's why he created marriage so that Adam wouldn't be alone so that he would have a companion, a counterpart, someone to compliment him. And in the book of Genesis, I love this, in Genesis chapter 2, we see how God created it to be so that we would be close socially. We have this need, it says in verse 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. This is the first time in the Bible God said something wasn't good, by the way. You scholars out there know that God created the trees. He said it's good. He created the flowers. Oh, it's good. It's very good. He created the deer and the squirrels and the rabbits. And he said, that's great. And then he created man. And man was alone. And he said, that's not good. I've got to make him um, someone that would be his counterpart. You've got to make him uh, someone to hang out with. And so he made Eve. And you know what? He called her woe man. Like, whoa, man, this is, that's what the Bible says. You just got to uh, accentuate it the right way. And he said, hubba, 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 look at that right there. He was in love. He found his wife that God made. No, truth. I mean, they were walking around the Garden of Eden. Eden. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I mean, they were naked. They, uh, excuse me, they were butt naked walking around like nothing was wrong with it. They didn't know sin. They didn't have any shame at all. They just... Loved each other. It was a great romance going on in the Garden of Eden. I've just embarrassed everybody in the building today. Hey, but you're listening. I said sex this morning in the first service, and the guy went like this. (laughs) I'm not joking. It was about just like that. And he listened the whole service, man. He was taking notes. So get your pens out, and let's go. God wants you to be close socially. He wants you to have love and friendship. He wants you to have shoulder time. And here's the helpful hint, take walks together. Helpful hint, number one, under the first point, God wants you to be together close socially, so take walks together. And you don't have to take this literally, I want you to get the overall idea of the importance of spending hangout time. Like where you meet up and you go on a date and have date night. How many people out there struggle to carve out time for your date night because you get so busy with life? And let me just say, it's hard. I struggle with it. We struggle with it. But we try to make time. We've been going on a couple walks, and that's why I put walk. We've, we've tried the walking thing because we're trying to get cardio in. And I noticed last Sunday night, we, I think it was Sunday night we did this. We walked around, and we, we were walking and talking, and I felt closer to Julie after we had taken a walk together. And we took another walk together this week. I want to encourage you to walk together. You need to have a friend that gives you companionship and that you're able to do life with. Go hiking. 
do something together, carve out time to go bowling or pickleball or whatever in the world you want to do, God wants you to take this helpful hint. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, at one time you were best friends, but now there's a dangerous distance. You've got to start being together intentionally once again with the fun things in life so that you can have friendship, companionship, and romance rekindled in your marriage. You can't do it if you stay apart. You've got to have time together. Go on walks together. Have some shoulder time together. The problem is that one time you were best friends, now it's more like your roommates. And so God help us today to understand that God designed you to be together, socially together. Secondly, God wants you to be close spiritually. This is so important. And it's so overlooked in our day. God intended, originally intended in the Garden of Eden for Adam and Eve to go in the cool of the day on long walks with him. They would go on walks with God before the fall of man, before the sin entered into the world. This is God's original intent for you, and this is how your marriage will thrive. This is how any relationship will thrive. You start praying together and have a spiritual talk about the word of God. Go to church together, pray together, and your marriage or your relationship will grow, I can promise you that. There's no greater type of relationship than when a husband and wife get closer to God together, they're able to be stronger. This is what the Bible says, Genesis, once again, Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. This was normal activity for Adam and Eve. In the evening, when it was in the cool of the day, uh, it wasn't in Arizona, by the way, because there's no cool of the day in Arizona. So another state, another continent, they were in the Garden of Eden. And they were able to have a cool time where they walked together and there were no mosquitoes, there was no sweating, it was just perfect paradise, holding hands and making plans as they talked to God together. And that brought them amazingly close. And if you're looking for some secret sauce to get your relationship back together close once again, try praying together. Sometimes Julie and I, we try to do this at night uh, on a regular basis. We'll just lay there and, and drift off to sleep as we pray. We, we pray together, and it's not a fancy prayer. Let me tell you, sometimes it's a short prayer. It doesn't have to be like fancy words like, um, how great thou art, O oh Lord, heavenly Christianese language type stuff, right? It can be normal words like, God, I'm so tired. Thank you for Julie not killing me today. I know I deserved it. We love you. Thank you for our boys. They wore us out today. We're falling asleep. And, and it, really, it's like that. A lot of times it's just almost like gibberish. But what it does is it connects us together in a spiritual way and says we don't hate each other. We actually love each other. And we're, we're going to bed happy. And I want you to know the joy of being able to pray together. Pray together daily. Go to church together weekly. In your marriage, worship should be a priority. And that's the helpful hint number two. Helpful hint number one was walk. Helpful hint number two is worship. You've got to be worshiping God together. It will bring you closer. You're doing good. Go ahead and pat yourself on the back today. Here you are listening to this helpful hint. Regular church goers, according to, shockingly, according to the New York Times, regular church goers experience longer lives, they live longer, they have less mental health problems, and they have better health overall. Isn't that amazing? And we've heard for years that married couples who are in the church experience the same divorce rate as unchurched people do. How many of you have ever heard that, that statement before? A lot of hands up. Here's what they don't tell you. They don't tell you that that study reveals this as well, that Divorce rate drops down to like 13% for couples that are actively engaged together in regular worship. So if they say they're in the church and they go Christmas and Easter, that's great, but it really doesn't have an impact on the divorce rate. But couples who come together every week for church can experience a far less divorce rate. And so I just want to tell you today that even... The New York Times, <laughs> amazingly enough, would say that going to church gives you definite uh, good byproducts by being at church as far as your health and your relationships are concerned. So number one, God wants you to be close socially. Number two, God wants you to be close 
spiritually. And here we go, guys. God wants you to be close, number three, sexually. God wants you to be close. In fact, we're going to learn in God's word today that he created sex. Sex is a good thing. What God is going to say in this verse that we're going to read in just a moment is that married couples should have a lot of sex. And I'm going to tell you, you should be having more sex married couples, okay? This is what the word of God says. In fact, let's go ahead and read it. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, and God blessed them. Ready for this? And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So God gave man and wife a sex drive, men and women, so that they would procreate, so that they would have lots and lots of babies and fill the earth up. And so wives, I know you think your husband's a monster because he's got such a drive. The reason that he has that is God-given. He's not a monster. He's got a sex drive because God said, I want you to fill the earth up with people. And so he had to make it in such a way that that would happen. And by the way, uh, guys, Your wife has a sex drive. God gave her a sex drive. And it's important that you realize that her sex drive may look a little bit different than yours. But it's still there. They say men are like microwaves, right? And women are like conventional ovens. I don't know if that's true or not. I've heard the analogy before. But I can tell you this. Let me give you a helpful hint when it comes to married couples having sex. Is that winks are important flirtatious looks throughout the day, little touches here and there, hugs, kisses, touching with no ulterior motives. It's very important. And so the helpful hint is, yes, men have a sex drive, women have a sex drive, and guys, here's the helpful hint. Wink at her, flirt with her, treat her like you are in love with her as you once did. By the way, you already know what works, because as a early married person, early on in your relationship, you, were, you, you, already, you already know. And now it's like an open book test. You already got the answers. You just need to, you know what to do. You just need to do it. What I'm trying to say is have some kisses here and there. In the kitchen last night, Julie came up to me and hugged me. And she, she came up. I was doing the dishes like a real manly man should do, right? I don't know what I was doing at the sink, all right? I, I was uh, out there slaving over the grill and came into the kitchen. And Julie came in and she gave me a hug. I said, I like that. I like, that, was, that was good. Like, let's do more of that, right? It was all right. Let me just tell you, you need more times like that. If you want to connect at night, you need to connect more during the day in little ways. If you want fireworks at night, then maybe you should have some more flirts during the day. All right? Guys, I'm helping you out. Somebody say amen right there. Yes. I'm just trying to help, right? You may not need it, uh, but if you listen up, maybe, maybe you should be writing this down or something. Because God wants you to be together socially. God wants you to be together spiritually. And God wants you to be together sexually. And since we're in home improvement... And we're talking about all this. Uh, I just thought it would be good if we have our, lo- our, our lovebirds come back to the garden, right? Let's come on back here, Isaiah and Maddie. And uh, we're talking about dangerous distance. We've seen three areas that God wants us to be close in, right? We've seen three areas that God wants us to be close in. And now we're going to see how the vision starts, how we start to become distant. And it starts... By little offenses that end up building big fences. And so today I've got uh, this garden. It represents the beauty of a marriage and how it should be. And I've also got some some boards like fences, right? These these are going to represent the offenses that come into our lives. And uh, first of all, uh, maybe I'm going to give this offense to you. And it it could be something as small like, you know... uh, I know Isaiah would never do this, right? Isaiah, do you like chili? Like uh, green hatch chili? From, yeah, you got the good stuff. And uh, maybe he would say something like this. Like, hey, uh, Maddie, thanks for cooking dinner tonight. The, the chili is really good, but it doesn't really taste like my mom's chili. And then uh, it's not you know, like mom's chili is the best chili in the world, something like that. 
By the way, I made this mistake early on. That's why I'm using chili. And Julie's like, yes, sir. And I said, uh, hey, um, you know what? We're going to be, this was early in our marriage. And I learned a lot from this. And I said, you know, Julie, this chili's thicker than my mom's. And it's, like, do you think you can get the recipe? We're going to be doing this the rest of our life. You might as well do it, right? <laughs> yeah, and that went over like a lead balloon. And I pretty much hand her that offense right there. Give her that one. And, and that's what I did. I offended Julie, and she got a little mad. Look at that. You put that offense in there and just go ahead and strike that one up as a fail, right? It was bad. And uh, I didn't have chili for six years, and she finally got over it. Because here's what happens with offenses. That's all you think about. Oh, I'm, I'm underappreciated. He doesn't know my value. He, he, he doesn't think I'm good enough, and he complains. And there's an offense. And what we do, we, we don't let go. We drive it in the ground. And then this, it could be something. These are small things, like the garbage. Like, you know, I don't know about your house, but... At my house, sometimes I come in at night and I'm like, eh, thank you, man, because I'm going to enjoy this one. All right? <laughs> like, uh, this is what Isaiah does, okay? He comes in and the trash is full again. And it's like every time he walks in the kitchen, he's like, there, it's full. Am I the only one? I'm, I'm really mad about this. Am I the only, only one that can take the stinking trash out? And like, it's been 365 days in a row this year that I have been taking the trash out. And that's okay. I mean, hey, honey, it's okay. I'll take the trash out again. No problem. Right? Not in a, like, oh, that's your job. That's what you do. You know how it is. And it's a little offense. And then you go to bed angry because you didn't resolve it. It's an offense and it drives a wedge between you over something dumb. That's why we laugh about it. It could be the garbage. It could be Maddie goes shopping. And uh, she comes back with these uh, shopping bags or I call them shopping bombs, and uh, I'm going to let her hold this one right here. I don't know if it's this way at your house, but, like, she comes home, and she's got these gift bags, and, and Isaiah's looking at it like, what, what is that? Was that in the budget? Uh, and she, he's like, um, what, 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 how much was that? And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. I've got it on sale. And you're like, oh, yeah. And then they, they say stuff like this. Oh, look how much money I saved us. And they pull out the receipt. It's like 10 feet long. And I, it says I saved $75, but you spent $400. I remember the first time we had this little business meeting, and we were looking at the debit card statement. I mean, it was early, and it was like, this was 20 years ago now, something like that. And I, Julie reminded me of it. We were talking about this uh, not too long ago. And she said, uh, do you remember that time you came in with the statement and then you had that yellow, bright, fluorescent highlighter? And I said, yeah, I remember that. And I, I took the highlighter and I, I highlighted every transaction that she did. And let me, and I, I was a little upset about it. And we had this meeting and, and I said, Julie, like, uh, and it, let me just tell you, I, I haven't done that in 20 years. I've done it ever again. I tell you, that didn't go over good. I'm a smart man, man. Like, I learned fast. <laughs> yeah. You see this scar right here? <laughs> Julie, okay, we're still good, right? Am I good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, most of our fights happen in the car. Anybody like that? I hate driving in the car uh, with Julie because, like, I'm driving. And I can, I'm a good driver. I have no idea where I'm going. If I make one wrong turn, she says something. I don't know if y'all, y'all do this? Get in a fee. Yeah, go and get one out for this one. Put that one in there with some bitterness because, like, you get to that point, you're like, well, if you don't like my driving, there's another seat you can sit in. You can drive if you want, and then it escalates, right? You could, and then you're, you're doing this the whole time because your kids are in the back, you know, going crazy. And so stay out of the car. Just drive separate. That's why God gave two vehicles to people. <laughs> I tell you what, another thing will drive wedges in your relationship, these offenses. They're called Unmet expectations. And uh, unmet expectations work like this. Thanks, man. Unmet expectations work like this. Well, um, for my birthday, it was always been this way in my family. Like it's a national holiday. The dad wakes up with a special song. I'm no joke. 
This happens in real ha families across America. There's this special recorded song, and it's got their name in it, customized to them. And so they, they sing this song, they play it. At 7 a.m., the birthday celebration starts, but Isaiah didn't get the memo. It's an unmet expectation. It's a national holiday, but he's thinking we're going to go, what's your favorite restaurant? Well, she likes Flower Child. She, Isaiah's thinking, okay, 7 o'clock tonight, we got reservations. We're going to the Flower, we're going to flower Child. We're going to eat healthy. And that's all good, but it ain't all good because her dad woke her up with a sweet uh, little song and birthday cake and pancakes looking like Mickey Mouse and stuff. And, and now he ain't done, he's already lost because it's an unmet expectation. Unmet expectations are uncommunicated expectations. And that's not fair. And, but it's still, it, whether it's fair or not, and you say, well, she shouldn't be so sensitive. And you know what? You get offended over little stuff, right? I mean, we all do. We get our feelings hurt, whether good, bad, or ugly. It just happens. And so she's putting that one in there, and the fence is being built. Y'all go ahead and put a couple more in there, because then a baby's born, something like that. And, and a little, little baby comes along, and uh, she keeps getting up in the middle of the night to help the baby, and the baby's crying, and she says, that's, that's all right. I'll get up again. And then, sure, I know you got to work tomorrow, but... I'll get up with the baby again, and somehow what happens is one little offense at a time. You see what's happened. Little, here's the big idea. Little offenses build big fences, and they create division. And we could say that even these little things become a big deal when there's so many of them that build up. And sometimes the offenses aren't small. And you've experienced some Big offenses, some hurts, some betrayal, some things you, your spouse did or that person in that relationship did that you never dreamed would occur. And you're thinking to yourself, man, uh, I'm, I'm hurt. And I'm going to stonewall. Isaiah, come back here with me because you're like, I'm, I'm not going to live like this anymore. I didn't even know about the stinking birthday. And I'm, I'm a terrible driver and I know it, but I don't deserve to be treated like that. And I can't believe she did that. And so she's on this side of the fence. He's on that side of the fence. And this little offenses, one at a time, have built a big fence. And sometimes it hurts so bad. And this is what happens. And, and it's dangerous because temptation creeps in. And we've seen it far too often. How when we get divided, then people start making bad choices. One small offense at a time. If only we had someone that could help us with offenses. If only someone could have a breakthrough in the fence. If only someone could help us have breakthrough. And if there was only somebody that knew how to handle offenses. I mean, if, if somebody that we could talk about today, knew what to do with offenses, I think we could have a breakthrough and, and they could come back together. And I think in our relationship, if we would look to, if we just had somebody that, that knew what to do with offenses. And today I want to tell you, there is somebody that knows what to do with offenses that we have. Somebody hung on the cross, his name's Jesus. And as Jesus hung on the cross, he said, Father, I'm not going to hold on to the offenses. Father, Forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus paid for all the offenses on the cross. And he tore down the wall. He took our sins and he died for them on the cross so that we could be forgiven. And I've got good news for you. If you will follow the Jesus way, if you'll forgive your enemies, if you'll forgive those that have done you wrong, and instead of at night closing the door and sulking in your bitterness and destroying your own soul, if you offered forgiveness the Jesus way. He said, I'm going to die to myself on this issue. Yeah, I'm going to communicate. We're going to talk it out. And, and you're going to make them listen, right? I get it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to forgive. I'm going to forget best I can. It's not worth having our home torn apart over these little offenses or even the big ones. Today, I just want to encourage you to look to Jesus and, and 
maybe, just maybe, the Jesus way, even though it's hard, could heal your broken relationships, could give you grace to forgive, could give you mercy in your heart that through Jesus, there could be healing for your home. And your home could look like a garden again, like it's meant to be close together. It can be beautiful like the garden as God originally intended you to be together socially, close like best friends, close spiritually, and even close sexually. And today I want to encourage you to look to Jesus with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. The Jesus way is the only thing I know to tell you that's going to work. Offering forgiveness, not holding on to grudges, but letting go. Right now in this moment, maybe you'd like to grab someone by the hand. I don't know, because it makes a lot of sense right now, right? Don't be standoffish. Be tenderhearted. Treat the other person in your heart right now like Jesus treated his crucifiers. And say, God, help me. To do this the Jesus way. And right now, I want you to pray and ask God to help you with your marriage or your relationship. God is for you. He wants to help you. He can put it back together. He is the solution. He offers forgiveness because his body that was broken on the cross, his blood that was shed. Right now, you can have healing. By his stripes, we are healed. And right now, I'm going to pray as we pray together for healing in our homes, for home improvement, for reconciliation to happen. Father, thank you so much for what Jesus did for us on the cross. We believe it. It's hard to live like Jesus, but help us to fix our relationships the Jesus way, tear down the walls, tear down the fences. Help us to let go of the offenses that lead to big fences. God, marriages to come back together close socially, spiritually, and sexually. We recommit our marriages to you, God. We recommit our relationships to you. Help us to make that text, to make that call. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, in this moment, we've talked about our human relationships our relationships with each other. And now I want to tell you, you can have a relationship with God. He loves you today. He loves you so much that he did die on the cross. And if you look to Jesus today and see his sacrifice for you, how he allowed his body to be broken, his blood to be shed, right now you can accept him as your Savior. You can turn from your old life to new life in Christ. And I'd love to lead you in a prayer and start that relationship with Jesus right now. Would you pray along with me? Would you please pray and give your life over to God? It's the best thing you'll ever do, the Jesus way. Let's go. Let's pray. You can pray it silently. You can pray it out loud. Here it is. Say, dear God, I turn from my old life. I turn to you. I believe you died on the cross. I want to live for you. I know you rose again. And rose to give me life, new life. And so I accept it. I thank you, God, for accepting me through what Jesus did on the cross. In his name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we put our hands together and praise God for what he did here today? I want to I want to say to all of you who said yes to Jesus, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. It's the greatest decision you could ever make. It's the life-changing decision. I'd love for you to right now take out the I said yes to Jesus card. It's in the seat pocket. Fill that out. Drop it in along with those uh, spiritual growth challenge cards that are going to, the buckets are going to be going around. Drop that off in there today. It's going to be an awesome opportunity for us to grow together. And I tell you what, man, I'm so excited about what God's doing here at Compassion. Great to see all of you. I know God has big plans. Be back next week for the Discover Your Destiny series and bring some people with you. And let's, uh, let's live out this teaching today as we live out the Jesus way. Boy, well, man, church, would you stand to your feet? We're going to sing one more song together.
Cause I follow Jesus I follow Jesus He wore my sin I'll gladly wear His name Cause He is the treasure He is the answer Oh, I choose the Jesus way I will praise you if you change. I'll see. Come on, let's sing this again. And if you kill me, my hold is We choose to follow you today. We choose to love like you today. In every relationship that we find ourselves in, God, whatever conversations that we have with people outside of this building, God, I pray that we would always respond the way that you respond to us, with love, with grace. You're quick to forgive. You don't hold anything against us. Today we choose to follow you. I pray for every marriage that's in the room this morning. God, I pray that if they're struggling, I pray that you'd let them know today that you're walking with them, that you've never left them, even for a second. But you're calling them to come closer to you, calling them to walk closer, yes, together, but walk closer to you. Lord, we thank you for everything you did in this earth, and today we choose your way, the Jesus way. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Let's give a shout of praise, church. Well, hey, thanks so much for coming out to Compassion Church. We love you. We're praying for you. Make sure you hang out. 
still have things to do in the yard. We love you, praying for you. God bless. We'll see you next time.